How's it going guys and welcome to the Reluctant Riders Tips for Suspension. So for those of you that are wondering, my regular sus subscribers, you'll notice that a video went up the other day saying that's it, I've got to take a break from the video from the videos and from the Reluctant Ride of the YouTube channel while I get my business up and running. Bollocks to that. I've decided that if I can't make time for the mountain biking in the channel, then something's very wrong. So that's what we're gonna to do. Today we're gonna to just do a beginner's guide to suspension for people like me idiots like me that just leave the suspension as it is will just set everything up to factory setting and then just don't play with it again so let's jump into it so the way i look at it with a set of forks if we start off with a fork um the rear shock does exactly the same except it's in one you know one chamber most of the time and then with the little um cartridge as well but if we look at a set of forks basically one of your stanchions contains the spring which is either a steel spring or an air spring it's pretty much as simple as that and then the other side is your rear rebound or your dampening cartridge in the other stanchion of the fork and that's basically the shock absorber so the spring be it a coil or be it air pressure basically gives you your ride height and gives you your spring and returns you back to your ride height again gives you the travel that's what actually you know that's the main part of the suspension really but if you just had an air spring or a physical spring with no dampening it would be a really rough ride so like the same as a car a car has a spring and a shock absorber the dampening um, cartridge in the other side of your fork is basically a shock absorber you can turn up and turn down your rebound dampening and that that's what makes your suspension the suspension your, your actual spring and then your dampening um in your in your rear shock it does all exactly the same except it does it in a much more not complex in a complex manner but there's kind of like a dual piston a piston within a piston um or you know there's various ways they do it with the with the rear shock a couple of ways they do it with the rear shock that we won't go into but the same thing happens back there now if you order if you've ever ordered a bike online and it's come in a box you'll notice that it comes with no air in the forks or the or the rear shock and you have to pump it up that's the first and kind of the most basic adjustment that you've got and what i recommend that you, and the, well the right thing to do really is to set the suspension air pressure be it the fork or the rear shock to your weight with all your equipment on and then with all your equipment on you set the sag and so air pressure plus sag setting is kind of your first you know your first adjustment that you can make on the bike and the way that i look at all of these adjustments just my kind of tip with all of these different adjustments and how to remember how to use them is your air pressure they put dust caps on the valves because of the fact that they've got to keep dust out of them that's why they're called dust caps but at the same time if you think of the of the of the dust caps and think about the fact that they're covered up you aren't really meant to be getting at them all the time you shouldn't be adjusting your suspension air pressure all the time unless you're severely changing disciplines like on, a, on like one ride you wouldn't expect to be changing your shock pressure throughout the course of a ride really so just note where that where your suspension valve is how easy it is to get to the fact that you need a tool to adjust it that's a pretty good indicator of the fact that you're not supposed to be changing it all the time but that is your first adjustment so just get that set up your sag should be set Pete some people say 25 to 35 20 to 30 I set mine between 30 and 40 because I'm a bigger guy and I can't really get it much less than 30 anyway and without blowing the shock up so between 30 and 40 is your sag depending on your style of riding and that's your first adjustment air pressure on a set of rock shock forks the top right hand side there's a blue um, knob called compression and it's got a plus and a minus sign plus is, is clockwise minus is anti-clockwise and basically when you increase compression if your compression goes all the way to lockout on your fork or on your rear shock um, then that's all the way in all the way up whatever you want to call it all the way to clockwise all the way to the plus sign is locked off if you if your compression doesn't lock it all the way off then that's like high that's like a high resistance setting because what compression does is like i say the most extreme version of compression all the way up is locked halfway down would be kind of a bit of resistance it basically you know gives you stiff it gives the fork stiffness resistance makes it harder to push the fork through its travel um and then all the way down all the way open all the way to the minus is no resistance apart from the air pressure the sort of you know the the friction in the seals and stuff like that so you, wide open is you, you know all the way down is your compression that you would use for descending so as you so as your forks give you all of the suspension that you need nice and plush suspension so 
again, take an indicator from the fact that your compression lever is on the top right hand side of your fork. Sometimes you even have a remote for it. It's right there for you to get at all the time. Don't be a sap like me and just set your suspension up and just ride and get used to it. Use your compression when you're climbing, turn it all the way up. When you're descending all the way down, if you're doing a particularly long ride, pedally ride without much descent, just set it midway and just leave it maybe. If you're doing like a cross country ride on an all mountain bike, use your compression, use the position of it as an indicator as how often you're supposed to use it. Every ride really. So now we'll move on to the next adjustment that you've got on your forks and rear suspension is rebound dampening. Now it's normally got, it'll have like a, like a hair and a tortoise to, to you know, and you can turn the knob clockwise or anti-clockwise. I think normally all the way, all the way clockwise is no dampening, all the way anti-clock, no, other way around, all the way anti-clockwise is no dampening, I think, all the way clockwise is full dampening. And basically what your rebound dampening does, if you increase your rebound dampening all the way to the tortoise side, what it does is it restricts oil flow through the fork and makes your fork recover to ride height, to your riding height, much slower. So like a really, and then obviously if you turn it all the way down, you get you get no dampening whatsoever. And like I say, this is kind of your shock absorber and dampener. It just makes it a much smoother ride. So a good example of how to use this, a good couple of examples of how to use your rebound dampening is I was riding in the UK recently on a really gnarly trail. I didn't notice, but I had my dampening all the way up and I, and I was riding and I kept, I kept losing my feet on my pedals. And I had my rebound dampening set so as it was recovering really slowly without noticing. And I said to my mate, I, I, can't, I can't keep my pedals today. I keep coming off. I don't ride clip plus, so I kept coming off my pedals. And he said, have a play with your dampening. Maybe turn your dampening down so as your bike is recovering quicker and holding your, basically holding your pedals pinned up against your feet because you know it's, it's soaking up the terrain but recovering nice and quickly. Straight away it fixed the issue I had I, without realising I turned my rebound dampening all the way up pretty much and I was for all intents and purposes riding a hardtail on you know the really gnarliest of terrain which is why I couldn't keep my pedals. Turned it down, no problem, brilliant. Another example is perhaps if you're at a jump park, like perhaps it's the opposite, if for like a really good jumper, they might want their rebound dampening all the way down. So as when they preload into the lip of a jump, because the bike is just trying to recover as quick as it can, give them a massive boost off the jump. If like me, you're not particularly good at jumping, if you do that, have your rebound dampening all the way down, you might find that your bike is trying to chuck you over the bars every time you go off the lip of a jump turn your rebound dampening up a little bit and it will just give you less of a pop off the jumps and make it a much comfortable, more comfortable ride in the air for you. Just a couple of examples there. And then the last adjustment, basic adjustment that I'll talk about, um, you can do this in your shock as well, but I'll just talk about in your fork, is you can add bottomless tokens. And basically what bottomless tokens do is they reduce the, the air volume in the fork to make the, to make the fork more progressive. Seth from Seth's Bike Hacks did a brilliant video about this, but Basically what happens is if you have no bottomless tokens and you've got more of a volume of air, um, the top of your fork, you know, when you compress the top of your fork without any compression wound up, it's there's very little resistance because that's it, it's most, you know, the air, if you look at look up Boyle's law, it might give you a bit of a hint as to what I'm talking about, but it's the easiest part to compress because the air isn't under much compression at that point. As you get to the bottom of the fork, the air pressure increases in the fork because there's nowhere for it to go and you get resistance without, and that's basically, that's a progressive, that's like the progression of, of the fork is it's easy at the top and difficult at the bottom. When you add bottomless tokens, you make them more progressive and less linear. Linear being the same amount of force required at the top of the fork as the bottom of the forks of travel. Linear, um, sorry, progressive means that as you compress, when you get to the end of the travel of the fork it's much harder to compress it so it stops you from bottoming out gives you a much more kind of downhill orientated ride height yeah it just makes it much most people these days run bottomless tokens so that's the kind of last adjustment that you can make it's very easy to fit bottomless tokens maybe i'll do about a video about that one day it goes underneath the air valve on the air side the spring side of your fork um yeah in a very easy way of just making your fork feel much more progressive and, and more comfortable for riding and that's about it guys this is aimed at beginners so for you guys that have watched and thought this is just obvious um and maybe even i got stuff wrong because i was talking quite fast trying to get the video right but this is for beginners so for you guys who have, have watched this and taken that on board just as a recommendation i recommend that you set your suspension up so you set your air pressure in your sag first 
pump your suspension up to the factory setting. It's a, there'll be like a little um, table on the, the inside of one of your fork stanchions that you can work off. And then out of the manual for the shock absorber, it'll give you an air pressure for your weight with all your gear on. Set it to that and then set your sag between 30 to 40%. It doesn't really matter where between 30 to 40%. I would say closer to 30 to start off with. And then you want to wind your compression all the way down to the minus sign so, sign, so as you've got zero compression, and then set your dampener to the middle. So send the knob all the way to one end, turn it all the way to one end, turn it right through a full cycle of all the clicks, and then find the middle point, set it to that, and then ride. But what you want to make sure you do is that you don't just set it up and leave it and get used to it, because the whole point in all these adjustments is to make the bike feel much more how you want it to feel while you're riding much better for the terrain much better for your riding style so make sure you just take note of what the bike's doing while you're riding if you're getting arm pump if you're losing your pedals all the time take note of all these things and just tweak things while you're riding tweak your air pressure take a shock pump with you for your first couple of rides tweak your rebound dampening um yeah and just just really play with the settings don't just don't do what i've been guilty of in the past and just leave in your suspension as it is and just getting used to it and you know your arms getting stronger instead of you playing with the rebound um, dampening on your front on your fork and, and actually making it easier on your hands like you know make sure you have a good fiddle with it and that's it guys i'm back i need to be making these videos uh, too much work and no play makes jack a dull boy we've got to get back to it so i hope you found that useful you beginners who, who haven't really used your suspension too much thanks a lot for watching guys on your bikes